on YouTube. This is Matt the Long Care Little Guy. And I'm going to talk about um, next year already, things that we deal with. Uh, I came across a yard book comment on Facebook. Uh, somebody wants to start a lawn business and they wanted some advice. And one of the comments said, you need to be an LLC and an S Corp. I, they probably didn't mean it that way, but that's kind of how I got it. Uh, but anyways... Here's the intro. Think about that. Do you really need to be an LLC? Do you really need to be an S-Corp? Or can you do it some other way? Stay tuned. Okay, so when it comes to businesses, and the way you're going to set up your business, if you're a new guy that's thinking about getting into lawn care and you don't know what to do right off the bat, I want to preface this video or this advice with letting you know that I do not know that much about this topic, but I do know what my accountant has told me about my business, okay? And I don't know all the different ways that you can classify your business. And also, or furthermore, I do not know what is going to be right for your business. But I will tell you what I know. And what I know is that if anybody tells you that you have to be an LLC or you have to be a C Corp or an S Corp or, or anything, if they tell you you have to be anything, they may or may not be right. That's all I'm saying even if what they say is in line with what the majority of the people are telling you, because the majority of the people also may be majoritively and collectively wrong. <laughs> I'm just telling you that. Okay, you're going to get a lot of advice on YouTube channels. You're going to get a lot of advice on Facebook panels uh, or forums or all the different social media outlets. And there's a million of us doing this, right? As a matter of fact, there literally is a million lawn care companies. I've looked that up before. In past videos, I talked about that with Blood Drive, which I'm due. I'll talk about that another time. But we're talking, we're talking taxes this time, business classifications. So what am I? I am a sole proprietor. What does that mean? A sole proprietor means to me, the way I, I reconcile this in my mind, is that I have no employees. I'm all by myself. I'm a sole proprietor. Nobody else owns the company. I'm not partnered with anybody. I don't have any employees. I suppose I could have some employees, but I don't think that would be smart to be a sole proprietor at that point. The sole proprietor takes on all liability for the company. And I think this is why a lot of people say you've got to be an LLC because of the liability. But me having no employees um, and for tax reasons, because I don't, my taxes are absorbed into my personal taxes under my social security number. It works for me. Okay. I asked my accountant about this last year because I had somebody come to me and they said, you need to be an LLC and you need to be an S Corp because of taxes. You're going to get a tax benefit from doing that. And I said, okay, well, let me talk to my tax guy. So I talked to him and what he told me just to summarize it was that I don't make enough money to be an S Corp. I could be an LLC if I wanted to, and there'd be nothing wrong with that. But an S Corp, he said, would not benefit me. And if I remember correctly, because it has been nearly a year, we're about ready to turn over this year since I had this conversation. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe he said that if I go to be an S Corp, then I have to start filing taxes quarterly. And I'll have to pay myself a salary. We didn't get crazy into details about this. He lost me when I said I had to file quarterly. Because I pay him to do my taxes. And I realize you could say, well, you don't have to pay him. I know I don't have to pay him, but I'm lazy. Okay. Some things I'm just lazy. Biggest thing. I just don't have time. I don't have time to deal with that. Okay. I pay him a lot of money. He saves me a lot of money. That's just the way it is. But I pay him 
$300 a year to do my taxes. So I would have to pay him 300 times four to do quarterly. So that's three times, that's $1,200 a year. When I only made 22,500. I know, I just dumped my number on you, right? Doesn't sound like a lot, right? But hey, for a part-time gig, that's not bad. Could I be making more? Yes. I don't want any comments. I don't want any comments about like, you know, hey, what's your, how much do you charge for loans anyway? Didn't you say you have 33 accounts? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I mean, I'm not, I don't want to be rude, but I just know that there's going to be people out there that are going to watch this video. They may or may not be subscribers. I don't know, but they're going to watch this video and they're going to say, man, you're doing it wrong. Again, there's no right and wrong. I am profitable. My business is doing what I need it to do for me. Could it be better? Yes, it could be better than that. Right, 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 right. But anyways, if you know the little guy, Mua, then you wouldn't be questioning it. So anyways, if you're one of those guys, you know, the first time you see my video and you want to give me grief about all that, that's fine. I know I could be making more money. I get it. But that's what I did. He, he said, but my tax count said, he said, at this point, it, that there's, there's not enough benefit when you don't have to do that. Why would you just want to pay me $1,200 a year when the same thing could happen, you know, paying me $300 a year to do your taxes once. But then said, hey, how about this? Come back to me in September and we'll reevaluate. We'll see where you're trending and maybe it would be advantageous for you. I'm open to that. I like my tax guy for that reason, you know. But he advised me that, no, that's not uh, that's not required. And he says there really is no advantage to even just going LLC because you can be an LLC and an S-Corp and you can also just be an LLC in another form. Some people don't know that. Not all, LLC, not all LLCs are created equal. That's something very important you guys need to know. Okay. So again, the point of this video is not to give you all different kinds of things, go through all the different classifications that you could do. Um, but I just want to tell you guys what I do. Let you know that I'm still profitable. My business is still working for me and I'm not working for my business. Okay. Um, and I'm just a sole proprietor. I take 100% of my money out and it is absorbed into my personal finances. So technically, the business has no money of its own. Okay. It's all personal. Okay. It's all income. I don't pay myself a salary. I don't have to pay myself a salary. If I did, then I can't take 100% out. I got to leave some money in the business. But then what do I do? You say, little guy, well, how do you, how do you effectively like manage your money. How do you know if you're profitable? How do you know if you're making money, losing money or whatever? Well, it's pretty simple, really. I just keep track of the money I spend on the business and I file it on what they call a Schedule C. Okay. You can be a sole proprietor, file under your personal social security number and file a Schedule C. What that is, is that is business expenses and it gets deducted off of my overall income, which is the sum of my full-time job income, anything on a W-2, plus the revenue that I'm claiming from the business, okay? Now, what my tax guy said the first time I did his year, he says, he said, um, for my expenses, he says, do you have your receipts? I said, yes. For every transaction, I said, yes. And he says, okay. And then he went through the different categories on the Schedule C. He said, how much, for, you know, did you spend on this? How much did you spend on that? And then I gave him an overall number um, of my profit, okay? I said, this is how much money I received. How did I keep track of that? Did I give my customers receipts? I didn't. I didn't, unless they asked for one. Maybe that's taboo. Maybe my accountant would be like, hey, you need to start giving receipts or have a source document. Okay, maybe I do, maybe I don't, I don't know. But i tell you what I did. And I learned this in the Air Force with record keeping. If you keep good records, even if it's not a legitimate like Air Force form, because we Air Force has all these different forms, right? And there's proper ways to 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 um, keep records, to make records and keep records. But I remember we had an inspection. We had an inspector come in and he told us something. He said, If you didn't document it, then it didn't happen. And then in the end, he said, you could have wrote this down pretty much on a napkin. 
And if that activity happened, say, nine months ago, that napkin had better look like it's nine months old. You know, uh, but what he's getting at is like, listen, you can pencil whip stuff if you want. But if you do, I'm going to know about it because it's impossible to keep long term records over a 12 month period without showing uh, uh, the inconsistencies and the consistencies that reflect that you're lying. OK, so am I worried about auditing and, and, and like lying about my income? Not really. For one. I'm a low risk for 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 being audited anyway. And for two, if you guys have seen my record keeping before, I write a paper every single week and it lists all my jobs. It lists all the income that I made. It lists all the expenses that I made. And I have the receipts to keep track uh, that max that max that match every single entry I have. I do not have the receipts for the income. However, when you go back and look at my paper. You can tell that those papers are old. You could tell that those papers are used. You can tell that I'm not pencil whipping things. It's not hard for a reasonable human being to determine whether or not somebody's lying over a 12 month period for record keeping on income. So some of you guys, again, some of you guys might say, little guy, you're really taking a risk. You're really taking a risk. And to be honest with you, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not dishing out the best advice. I don't know, but this is what I do. Hey, babe. Hi. You want to be on YouTube for a minute? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe I could ask my wife a question. Hey, babe. I'm talking about record keeping and taxes and about being a limited liability company and an S Corp and how I'm a sole proprietor. Yeah. And I don't, you know, how I don't give anybody a receipt. For she's like, oh, maybe sometimes my business is my business. She doesn't get in the administrative part, but she knows that I keep it simple. And uh, but uh, uh, are we profitable? Do we make money? Mm -hmm. We do. She can tell. Can you can you tell uh, when I'm mowing lawns and when I'm not mowing lawns? Yeah. Yeah. Because what happens when I come in from mowing lawns? What do I do with that money? He goes like this. Bringing home the bacon. <laughs> I bring home the bacon. So anyways, that I, earlier, earlier, I was, uh, hey, buddy. Earlier, I, I was, I, I dropped our number on them on how much that I made a year. And, it, and, and I know that's a low number. Yeah. Uh, but uh, some people might be like, man, you're, you're not, you're not running a profitable business. But there you have it, guys. That's proof. If you want to know if you're profitable, ask your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah anyway anyways about about that i'm a low i'm a low liability for being audited uh so that's how i keep track of my stuff you know um and and no you don't have to have a, a source document for every dollar that you keep in if you're keeping a, a record if you're keeping a record my source document is my is my weekly log sheet with with the jobs that i list and and a reasonable human being, a reasonable auditor, 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 I mean, they they couldn't even prove anything anyway. The only thing that they could conclude is that I'm keeping records, and that's the important thing. You got to keep records, okay? So you can't just take dollars in and not write it down, and you can't have and you can't go through business without a logical system to keep to to track that income. But as far as I know, you're not required to give anybody a receipt, okay? Um, but that's how that's how a sole proprietor works. It's simple. I'm by myself, so I'm not required for anything more. And I'm and this is something that I told myself. I'm not going to do anything that I'm not required to do. I'm going to keep it simple. That's how you get keep from being overwhelmed. If you're a new guy, you keep it simple. OK, now maybe you guys can chime in and say maybe I am doing something illegal. Maybe there's something in there. But but whatever comments that even on this on this video and whoever's watching that's seeking advice i want you guys to just take those comments with a grain of salt and don't think that you have to do anything until you meet with a professional okay not a professional lawn care guy necessarily there's a lot of great advice out there and it may be right but just know that there is no right answer okay there's so many different ways that we can set up our businesses and what matters is what is going to be most tax advantageous for you and what is going to increase your bottom line and then what's going to keep you legal as far as i'm aware i'm completely legal with what i'm doing okay and 
I'm paying my taxes, right? How many long guys out there are saying it's all under the table, right? The IRS knows that. They know that. If I was going to lie, why would I file my taxes at all? Right? I'm just saying, people know people know integrity when they see it. All right? So don't worry too much about that. Don't make it harder than what it is. If you have any questions about how you should set your business up, talk to a tax accountant, okay? A lot of those guys might even give you that, that advice for free in hopes that you'll go and you'll file your taxes with them, okay? Um, and there's some other things involved with that. So, um, so the original question, I just want to refresh you guys on the original question. Do you have to be an LLC? Do you have to be an LLC as an S-Corp? Do you have to be uh, classified in any particular way? And the little guy's answer is no. The only right way is the way that works for you, the, one, the way that fits your business best, okay? And those are three things that I keep in mind. Am I legal? Does it possibly impact my bottom line? And is it the simplest possible solution that still does the job? So those are the three things that I would consider. Um, this video is just kind of off the cuff because I just got that that comment uh, on Facebook. I just saw that that comment on Facebook. I was like, that's a great topic. That's a great topic. And what better way or what better time to start thinking about starting your lawn business than right now? You got to start thinking about it now because it's going to be here again. Before you know it, you're going to be mowing. Don't wait. Don't wait a month before mowing season starts to, to start thinking about this stuff. Get it going now, y'all. Get it going now. Save your money. Buy a mower. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys. Thanks for being patient with me. I'm glad you guys got to see my wife. I'm glad you got to see my boy in this video. That was unexpected. Um, and anyways, this is kind of an open topic, right? Open topic. Let's hear your comments. Share this video, by the way. Okay. If, if share this video, like it, subscribe, hit that little bell. It, you'll get notifications every time I post a video. All right. And I think I'm actually going to start posting some more, um, through the off season just to kind of take up some of my time. And, uh, and I want to engage you guys. I want to see how you guys are doing in the off season, see what you guys are doing, what's keeping you busy. So pray for me. I'll pray for you. Don't forget to give blood. I'm going to be giving platelets this next week. Oklahoma Blood Institute called me and said, hey, you got awesome platelets. They're amazing. You need to give us some of those. And not so many words, that's what they said. So I think Thursday, time permitting, I'm going to go give some platelets. So anyways, till next time, guys, long care little guy, peace out.